This dark spot is the darkest large spot of Mars. It covers about 5 million kilometers square, which is around half the surface area of the United States. And it is encompassing an area that is a shield volcano in the northern hemisphere, while in the southern hemisphere it is encompassing a crater-filled terrain. The name of that shield volcano is Certus Major. It has a diameter of about 1,100 kilometers. Although not visible in real color, it is visible quite well through a topographic map, which reveals a large surface without many craters. The surface slope is also very slightly slanted at 1 degrees, or frequently even less. And that very slightly slanted surface slope, over 550 kilometers, goes up to the highest point in the center of the volcano at around 2,400 meters above the Martian datum, which is the zero meter reference point for Mars. The terrain on this shield volcano is filled with wrinkle ridges. What exactly causes these is not certain. One idea is that they are created due to tectonics. This region also has multiple valleys. This one is 600 meters wide, and on the walls of the valley is this bizarre looking pattern. In the center of the shield volcano, there are two calderas. Calderas form when the magma chamber below the surface is emptied. Then the surface above the magma chamber collapses into the chamber, which forms a circular depression. In the case of the Certus Major shield volcano, it has two of them. Both are around 50 kilometers in diameter, and both are around 1 to 2 kilometers below the surrounding plateau. It is estimated that these calderas are around 3.5 billion years old, so they formed about 1 billion years after the formation of Mars. However, a topographic map reveals another feature present in the region, a mega caldera encompassing both of the smaller calderas. It doesn't have sharp edges, so it is not very easy to spot it in real color. But a topographic map reveals a somewhat circular depression some 200 kilometers across. NASA's Perseverance rover landed right at the edge of the Certus Major shield volcano, where it almost begins at the crater called Yezero, which is 2 kilometers below the Martian datum, and about 4 kilometers below the top of the shield volcano. And the rover did capture a bit of the dark surface that is in the region. The crater where the Perseverance rover landed is right at the edge of the Certus Major volcano, and also right at the edge of this massive plain. It is estimated that the plain formed 4.2 billion years ago, so it is by around 700 million years older than the Certus Major volcano. The plain is nearly minus 4 kilometers below the Martian datum, and it is almost like an extension to the large Borealis Basin. However, it clearly formed as a separate impact crater. In the transitional section between the two regions, the terrain shaped by lava flows is clearly visible. In some places, the elevation is gradual between the two regions, while in others, quite sharp. The dark patch extends beyond the shield volcano. More than half of it is in the southern hemisphere. This part, however, is much more cratered. And in the midst of these large craters, there is this large mountain range going in a straight line. It is visible quite well through a topographic map. It stretches for about 600 kilometers. It is very approximately around one kilometer above the surrounding terrain. There is also seemingly an extension to this mountain range. There isn't much information with regards to what caused the formation of this odd feature. Here is an image captured by NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. It shows how one part of these mountain ranges looks like. There are plenty of these thin bright patches of surface. They are likely exposed hydrated minerals. They are minerals which have water in their structure. This is known through the measurement of light waves bouncing off of the surface of the minerals. The light waves were captured through a spectrometer device measuring visible and infrared light waves. And yes, this is another piece of evidence for the existence of liquid water 
in the past on Mars. Besides the shield volcano and the mountain range, another characteristic part of the dark patch is this elevation. It is consistently some 2 kilometers above the Martian datum. Here is one image of a center of a crater that is in the region. It has this odd stack of layers that is being eroded. Dark patches on Mars are even visible from Earth through an amateur telescope. And yet, not much is known as to why these huge regions occur in the places they do. One reason behind why the surface in those regions is so dark is because the basaltic rock of the region is exposed, meaning that it is not very dusty there compared to other Martian regions. Basalt is a magnesium and iron-rich rock that forms when a very liquid lava quickly cools down. However, the surface there is, although somewhat rocky, still probably not smooth. Rather, it likely has tons of fine-grained dark soil. So the question is, what caused this region and other dark regions to lack the bright Martian dust? One characteristic feature of the Sirtis Major Patch is the bright lines next to craters that all go in a similar direction. These are called bright wind streaks. Although rare on Earth, on Mars, and especially here, they are very common. These bright wind streaks also might reveal the reason behind why the surface here is so dark. So wind streaks form due to raised rims of craters, which when wind encounters can cause for the wind to either deposit more bright dust, which would create bright wind streaks, or it could also do the opposite, that is, clean the surface from the dust and then reveal the darker surface underneath creating dark wind streaks. Here is an example of a dark wind streak in the Tharsis region. Here is how two bright wind streaks look like next to two craters in the midst of the Sirtis Major slope. These wind streaks also tell us in which direction is the wind blowing, or at least in which direction the wind was predominantly blowing at some point in the past. Maybe relatively strong or consistent winds blowing in a single direction over many years is the reason behind why this dark spot and other dark spots form. The wind simply could have lifted the light bright Martian dust particles and with that exposed the darker soil underneath the surface. Relatively high wind speeds could be the reason behind why the dark patches of Mars form in general. NASA's wind speed map, which is indicated not by the color, that is temperature, Instead, wind speed is indicated by the length of the arrow. And the wind speed map does reveal some exceptional winds happening around the equator, which is where the dark patches of Mars typically are. So there is seemingly at least some correlation between wind speed and the darkness of the surface. Still, it's not very convincing that it is entirely causing the dark spots, as there are plenty of spots on Mars with high wind speeds that are also very bright. Wind speed and wind strength are not the same thing, although they do correlate. The exact same wind speed of 10 meters per second could have different strength levels, that is lifting power, depending on atmospheric pressure. In a low pressure atmosphere, that same wind speed of 10 meters per second is weaker compared to when that wind speed is in a high pressure atmosphere. The Borealis Basin in the Northern Hemisphere is on average some minus 4 kilometers below the Martian datum. So the atmospheric pressure there is much greater compared to Sirtis Major, which is some 1 to 2 kilometers above the Martian datum. And yet the wind speed map shows that despite there being some places with really high wind speeds in the Borealis Basin, so the winds are really strong there, despite that those regions can be still very bright. Acadalia the dark patch in the Borealis Basin doesn't seem to have strong winds occurring there, and yet it is quite dark. Maybe in the past the Acadalia dark patch did have stronger winds occurring there, so the correlation between wind strength and dark patches could be stronger if accounted for that. Still, at the moment we just don't know if that is true. So wind speed and wind strength cannot be confirmed at the moment to be the major reason behind why dark patches form. 
So are there any other things then that could explain the reason behind why dark patches on Mars formed where they did? What about elevation? One idea as to why the volcanic Tharsis Plateau is so bright is exactly due to elevation. It is some 5 kilometers above the Martian Datum. So the atmospheric pressure is very low on Tharsis, which in turn makes it such that the winds there are very weak. So the idea is that once the bright dust reaches the high Tharsis Plateau, it is much harder for it to be moved back down to lower elevations due to weak wind strength. Although that is possibly at least part of the reason as to why the Tharsis Plateau is so bright, it doesn't fully explain how the Hellas Basin is also bright. It is the deepest basin on Mars at some minus 6 to minus 7 kilometers below the Martian datum. Some correlation could be found with some elevation band and darkness, but it's probably not going to be a major one or very informative in terms of explaining how the dark patches form. What about volcanic activity? Does that explain the dark patches? The Hesperia Plain, which has a shield volcano, is somewhat close to Sirtis Major. The central shield volcano of Hesperia is 3 kilometers above the Martian datum. Both Hesperia and Sirtis Major look pretty similar, have a similar size, a central caldera, both are filled with wrinkle ridges, Hesperia even more so, they are at a similar latitude and elevation, and yet they are not the same in brightness. They can still both be considered to be dark patches, but Hesperia is much brighter. Both of these vast fields likely formed as a result of lava flooding the regions billions of years ago. The Hesperia Plain also shows some craters that are layered in lava material that is estimated to be a couple of hundred meters thick. Despite so many similarities between the two regions, they are not even close to being equally dark. On top of that, while looking at other regions with clear signs of volcanic activity, such as Elysia Mons, Tharsis, and Apollinaris, well, all of them are quite bright, so volcanic activity alone cannot explain the formation of dark patches, although the composition of the lava might have something to do with it. Dust devils are whirlwinds filled with dust. They exist on Earth, and they are very common on Mars. Once a dust devil passes over an area on Mars, they typically lift the bright Martian dust particles, and then frequently, the dark surface beneath the bright Martian dust particles is exposed. So then, are dust devils the reason behind why huge dark patches form on Mars? This real color map of Mars reveals that the southern hemisphere is overall a lot darker than the northern one. That is also where the dark patches mostly are on Mars, and dust devil activity is by far more frequent in the southern hemisphere compared to the northern one, as this chart is showing. However, brightness levels do not perfectly correlate with dust devil activity. The most active dust devil band is by far between 45 and 75 degrees south, but the most dark part of Mars is between 0 and 45 degrees south. So dust devils are probably not the only reason behind why the southern hemisphere is much darker compared to the northern one, although they do possibly contribute. It is interesting that regional dust storms occur over dark regions of Mars. This map from 1973 that tracked the local and regional dust storm events shows exactly that. Plenty of dust storms occurring directly in the dark spots. Seemingly, without much of a difference between the light and dark regions. The expectation then is that that would cause a buildup over dark regions of bright Martian dust particles once they drop to the ground. That might not happen over a single dust storm event, but given enough time, the layer that would build up should be significant enough such that the surface is coated in a somewhat thick layer of bright dust. One would expect that that would happen over long enough periods of time, but seemingly it doesn't. On top of that, global dust storms on Mars occur about once every three Mars years. In this massive global event, one would also expect that over time, the bright Martian dust particles 
would start building up in nearly all of the dark regions, as global dust storms are well a global event. But again, that buildup obviously doesn't happen for some reason. The reason behind such a mystery might be very complex. It could be due to occasional strong bursts of wind that happen over dark regions. It could be due to dust storm grain density being lower over dark regions, causing them to be unable to be blanketed even over long periods of time. Still, none of this is known, so it's a very puzzling problem. So overall, it's extremely hard to say as to what process leads to the formation of dark patches on Mars. All we know is that they are not as dusty compared to brighter regions. But what leads to that lack of dust is where the problem is. Seemingly, there isn't much besides the reflectivity that is similar between these regions. There also aren't many studies with regards to these areas in recent times. There are still of course studies on the large scale dark spots of Mars. However, they are mostly from the 60s or 70s, back when there weren't satellites such as Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which captured the surface of Mars in great detail. So there wasn't nearly as much information overall about the surface of Mars, including dark spots. The lack of close-up imagery made the study of large-scale spots a lot more appealing since they were directly visible through telescopes at that time. The potential solution to the problem of how these dark patches form might not even be in any of the answers given in this video, or the solution might be a combination of several answers given here. Still, at the moment, that isn't known, so we have a bit of a mystery with regards to these massive surface areas.